Chair, now recognize Ms. Ocasio-Cortez for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Now, it has been repeated, and I would also like to repeat that the allegations being presented uh, by the majority are extremely serious, and the prospect of impeachment is also a gravely serious matter, which has been echoed by our witnesses today. And any serious impeachment investigation or inquiry relies on firsthand sworn testimony of witnesses to high crimes or misdemeanors. Today, the Republican majority has called in three witnesses to advance their case. Mr. Turley, I have a simple question for you. In your testimony today, are you presenting any firsthand witness account of crimes committed by the President of the United States? No, I'm not. No, you are not. Ms. O'Connor, you are the second uh, Republican witness here today. Have you, in your testimony, presented any firsthand witness account of crimes committed by, pre by the President of the United States? I have not. Thank you. Now, Mr. Dubinsky, as the third and final Republican witness uh, in this hearing, have you, in your testimony, presented any firsthand witness account of crimes committed by the President of the United States? Uh, I have not. And Professor Gerhardt, uh, given that you are the minority witness, I assume the same, correct? I am not a fact witness, correct. Thank you. And to clarify, two individuals presented today who do have firsthand accounts surrounding the progeny of these allegations are being blocked from testifying by the Republican majority. And I want to explain why this is important. Members of Congress, all of us in this hearing, are not under oath, as we are presently covered by the speech and debate clause. Isn't that correct, Professor Gerhardt? That is correct. And the speech and debate clause covers all statements by a member of Congress, whether they are factual or not. There are only four people in this room that are presently under oath in their testimony. And those are the four witnesses here today. Is that correct, Professor Gerhardt? That is correct. And so the direct testimony of the four individual witnesses here today are the bona fide words that this committee must use in order to proceed or substantiate an investigation. And I want to, uh, I want to emphasize why that's important. Earlier today, one of our colleagues, a gentleman from Florida, presented up on this screen something that looked, appeared to be a screenshot of a text message containing or insinuating an explosive allegation. That screenshot of what appeared to be a text message was a fabricated image. It was a fabricated image. I don't know where it came from. I don't know if it was the staff of the committee, but it was not the actual direct screenshot from that phone. And in fact, I would like to submit to the committee the actual full context from, as a, from the Ziegler affid Affidavit Number 1, Exhibit 402, of the full text of that exchange. Do I have permission from the chair? Importantly, what was brought out from, from that fabricated image excluded critical context that changed the underlying meaning and allegation that was presented up on that screen by this committee and by, by members of this committee. Now, they are well within their right to do that because they are covered by the speech and debate clause. This was not submitted by a material or fact witness under oath. That was not submitted by a material or fact witness under oath. The impeachment inquiry, any impeachment inquiry, regardless of party, is an extremely serious matter. Professor Gerhardt, in the impeachment inquiry under, um, into, into President Clinton, were there key fact witnesses that were presented in, during those proceedings? There were not in the House. Mm -hmm. In the Senate, were there any? There were. There were in the Senate. Now, in the impeachment, uh, in, in the impeachment investigations with, uh, with, President, with respect to President Trump, were there key material fact witnesses in the House? Y yes, ma'am. There were. Are there any key material fact witnesses here today? No, ma'am. None. And so we are wasting our time. When we talk about a threshold of an impeachment inquiry, was there a House floor vote that had a majority of members of Congress that opened an impeachment inquiry into President Clinton? There was. There was. Was there a full House floor vote uh, opening an impeachment inquiry into President Trump? 
in 2019. Is there one here for this one? Not for this one. There is not one here for this one. This is an embarrassment. An embarrassment to the time and people of this country. And I would ask that the chair and I would ask that this committee elevate to the promise of our duties here and, and comport ourselves with the consistency and practice that is required of our seats and our duty and our, our oath to our, to our responsibilities here. And with that, I yield back. Thank chair, you. Chair, Director Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.